Good morning, Advantage members. It's Tuesday, June 8th, 8.30 a.m. Prices of Bitcoin currently at 33000 flat, right? Looks like we made some pretty good movement overnight, basically finding continuation to the downside on this movement down, right? I think right around yesterday, uh, we followed this movement down. And then it looks like overnight, we fell down a little bit more. But for the most part, um, I think most of us in the advantage side are currently prepared for the movement down. We've been anticipating with a higher probability that this triangle is going to break down. Uh, and so for some of the preparedness that we've done, okay, is either you've been warned to head into cash or start taking profit or um, hedging or outright shorting, right? All these options have, have been talked about or have been available in the advantage side for the last couple of weeks, okay? And the reason I wanna bring that up is right now, in this very moment, there are many people who are going to be confused about the market conditions. They're going to be confused. They're going to be making mistakes by going long and short, flipping back and forth. Um, trying to pick the bottom in assets like BTC and altcoins. And then if they don't think that that's the bottom, wherever they'll buy, they'll sell at a loss and they'll keep making these common mistakes that we often see in the traditional finance world or even mistakes that you may have recognized in yourself uh, from 2018, 2019 bear market. So one of the great things about being part of the Advantage community, in my opinion, is that you can learn from the mistakes of others um, from effectively just you know talking to each other for those of us who did survive the 2018, 2019 bear market and how those conditions did play out and how those of us who actually came out alive and profitable, how did we uh, play that market? So I'm going to highlight to you exactly how I played the market back then, all right? So, Let's dial it back and you know, we'll, we'll do some comparisons of um, you know, where we are to where we uh, were back in 2018, 2019, right? So for the most part, um, I was not able to get out at the top in 2017, 2018, okay? I think I got out on average like here, a little bit maybe somewhere up here, and then a lot of it down here. And this included most of my BTC and most of my ETH and alts, okay? Now... A lot of people saw the market going down here and they did not recognize that Bitcoin was still the king of the market. Bitcoin dictates whatever happens to alts, okay? And luckily, I was one of the few and fortunate people who, had to who got to recognize that from here onward, once we started doing this, okay, the long side of the market is going to be very tough, very choppy, and you're going to have to size down a lot. You're going to have to protect your capital a lot. And luckily, I was able to do so. Okay. Now, I had warned back then, even for those of you who've been part of the Advantage membership since way back here, right? These conditions that we saw, I had the same warning for people, which is to not try to hodl your coins or to try to think that you're in it for the tech or try to come up with some excuse why you need to hang on to the market longer than you need to. If you've made tremendous money like you did here in 2017, the worst thing to do is in the 2021 part or 2020 part right here, if you made the same kind of money, the worst thing to do is not recognize that this is a clear downtrend. And from here, we may as well head down further. Even if we go sideways here, there is no guarantee that there will be a bid in the market in your altcoin bags and specifically the altcoins that you own, okay? Now we can go into the arguments of which altcoin is better and you know which ones are going to do well in the bear market, but it doesn't matter. See, the best risk to reward trade here is to actually be either outright short, either be hedged, or be prepared that we might start seeing more of an acceleration to the downside from Bitcoin, from altcoins, and basically from the whole market. So what is the best the position there? It's cash. Guess what our position is in the crypto community right now? Cash, okay? We've been trying to um, take 
scalps here and there and level to level trades. Uh, I only maybe took like two successful ones and maybe like four or five shitty trades, um, you know, uh, with, with BTC or altcoins, but it is what it is. But guess what? In the 5K count challenge, you guys know very well, right? Our count is almost three, three and a half X from the $5,000 start that we had. So from the beginning of the year, when we started off with 5,000, I'm somewhere close to about 18K, right? And my main account is doing just as good, if not better. Yeah, so we've been very transparent with Advantage members in this account. And so just to let you all know, once again, right, I'm currently just sitting in cash. If I don't really understand what's going in the market and I don't see a good position of play, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to just sit out, just watch it all play out. And when the, the, the risk starts building uh, as prices head down and we start seeing potential bottoming signals, then you can start entering into the market. Now, here's where I am in terms of recognizing sentiment and recognizing uh, where overall people are in the market. I believe that overwhelmingly people are still relatively bullish. Now, you could prove me wrong, but I showed you all in the last video that I did, um, where it was a public video of three different surveys where I showed you um, about 50 to 75,000 people that answered you know, who are actually you know, crypto traders or within the crypto space that they were still relatively bullish on the market. And they believe that you know, back then when we took the survey four or five days back, they believe that the market was still going to head up. Now, this is the kind of denial or say delusion that most people typically have when the market starts heading down. And it's the same kind of pattern recognition that I'm starting to recognize back from 2018, 2019 days, okay? You guys in the advantage side, okay? You are um, the people that I want to be able to provide analysis for and information for and take care of as best as I can. I honestly don't really care about anyone else um, in, in the uh, uh, Twitter space because everyone you know, is complaining about either prices are not going up high enough or they're uh, not dropping fast enough. Everyone is just constantly complaining. But our job in this market is to recognize where is the offside positioning in the market? Where is the sentiment you know, still very complacent? Where is the uh, positioning still waiting to be exploited? Right? And I believe right now that the slower the grind movement that we have just like this further and further down, that will be a lot of pain for a lot of people. So I'm anticipating right now that at the very least, I don't think that we're going to be in the bottom here. Maybe just like one more sweep, maybe below this low or even this low right here. This low is around 31K. This low is around 28, 29K, right? I'm thinking one or both of these lows get swept. And once that happens, then we'll figure out, okay, well, what the heck do we do from here? Because if you look across the board right now, first of all, there's a lot of pressure on order books across the board. Okay, sellers lined up right near the ask, that the front ask right here, meaning the first available sell that's ready, there's you know bids or uh, asks stacked up, right? And the bids in the market are relatively lacking right here across the board, okay? So ask stacked up here, ask stacked up here, Pretty decent, you know, big size ass stacked up, uh, stacked up on Bitfinex, uh, Bitstamp, and then Coinbase, uh, I guess a decent amount too. Okay. So the point is that, you know, it looks like the sellers are prepared to potentially keep selling into the market. Okay. Whenever prices pop up, they'll basically see, you know, uh, pressure from the sellers right here. The other thing about the market that's interesting right now is we have negative funding across the board. Now, this to me is interesting because negative funding across the board means that we may have come to a local bottom, all right? Because effectively, you know, when it comes to negative funding, you're borrowing money, right, from your position. So longs right now are favorable, right? Longs right now are favorable because shorts are effectively paying longs. So, what you want in situations like this is you want to see if there is going to be follow through in terms of this bottom being put in right here and a nice pop. 
if we do get that pop, well, there's still, you know, a lot of trouble between where we are right now and then say, you know, the June 6th weekly open and then the monthly open, right? It's not like going to be a straight up easy path for us. The other part of funding is that it does not properly recognize the amount of um, actual sellers in the market, say, especially on the spot side, and the lack of um, short positions in the market and open interest. Now, why is that important? Because funding must always be taken in context with open interest. And guess what? Open interest has actually been falling, right? It's been falling for a while. Currently, the open interest is only 10 billion. Three, four weeks ago, it was at 22 billion. So we're already half in the open interest. So when you have negative funding and then an open interest that's continuously dropping, you may not get the kind of short squeezes that we're used to you know, previously, because there's just maybe not enough people to squeeze to the upside. There might just be legitimate sellers in the market selling spot from Bitfinex, from Bitstamp, from Coinbase. Okay. So if you have legitimate sellers in the market that are selling spot, okay, and for the most part, maybe, you know, perps are not following through, meaning the futures contracts, well, then that means you don't really need to worry a whole lot about the, the negative funding. All right. And I, I believe that's where we are right now in terms of the market is we have momentum to the downside. We have a lack of you know, open interest in terms of short positions. OK, um, basically what you want to do is follow the trend. We've already seen this triangle uh, start to play out. We're rejecting this bottom trend line. We're under the monthly open, under the weekly open. We're sitting literally right at key support, which bounced us from here, right, around 32,500 on 23rd of May, if we start breaking past that, then I'm looking for this first X to be hit, which is around 31,000, and like I said, around 28 to 29,000, all right? Now let's discuss altcoins, okay? You can make the argument that, you know, altcoins have popped up a lot, and some of them are going to be strong, and, you know, DeFi is a future, and this and that, but I think we saw exactly what happened several days back when Bitcoin dumped from here, right? When Bitcoin was rolling over from this area right down, okay? Solana, Ethereum, Cardano, Sushi, whatever flavor of altcoin that you pick, okay? Look, this is the Card uh, this is a Solana structure right here. Let's pick Radium. Radium was dropping hard. Let's pick Matic. Matic was, uh, Matic was dropping hard right here. Let's pick uh, Alpha. Alpha dropped really hard. FLM. FLM dropped really hard. So the point is that they all look the same. Some might be higher than others right now off the lows, right? But the point is that they all drop equally hard when Bitcoin start to flush down. So what you need to recognize and not ignore in the market is it is clearly telling you that this market is not ready to be uncorrelated from Bitcoin. Altcoins are not ready to be uncorrelated from Bitcoin yet. It may happen someday, but that day ain't today. Okay, so you have to be able to look at the visible sign in the market and recognize that when you are in alt positions, or if you're thinking about catching the knives on these altcoins and you wanna go long because you think this is the bottom, remember, you are working against the trend of Bitcoin and you are effectively working against the trend of the market which is overall dropping an in open interest, meaning there's not really a whole lot of people who are buying futures contracts. And overall, the market is basically in a sell mode. It's in a risk off environment. It's in a selling mode. It's everything across the board is really lacking volume, as you could see, whether it's FLM, CRV, completely dropping off in volume. Look, Solana, it's like, I mean, if you look at the volume and you look at the price action, to me, as someone who's been trading for over a decade now, this is like the most obvious thing to recognize that this market right now is, you know, dead for the most part in terms of volume, right? There's no serious players in the market who are involved right now, okay? It's probably just, you know, a couple of whales here and there going back and forth, a couple of bots, uh, market makers, and retail. It's just, you know, battle amongst, you know, everybody, right? 
there's no um, big hedge fund or institutional bid out there because if there was, we would see it across the board in the market. And effectively, we would definitely see it in Bitcoin because guess what? Bigger hedge funds and institutions are far more attracted to Bitcoin than they are altcoins. So when Bitcoin lacks a bid, altcoins definitely lack a bid. And this is very true for Ethereum too, right? Ethereum is probably the most favored altcoin, the altcoin that's doing the most in terms of any other altcoin in the space, right? It's the most um, utilized asset. It's the most productive asset. Uh, it's the second highest market cap asset other than Bitcoin, right? Ethereum even is showing you a very decreased activity in volume, complete capitulation in volume, right? Huge sell-off. And then right here, it looks like it's just turning around. Right, turning around, maybe ready to go down further. I don't know how much further it'll go down, but here's some of the levels that I'm personally watching. Okay. <clears throat> so, first things first, um, we have to recognize this uh, parallel channel that I had drawn for uh, you guys on the advantage side. Right. We talked about that in this market right here. If you start seeing this triangle break up and out, then, then you can consider entering the trade for a quick potential long position up to 3,000, all the way up to about you know, 3,200, 3,300. But guess what? We did not cross any of these highs. We didn't cross this high right here um, yesterday. We didn't cross this high, and we definitely didn't cross this high. And so overall, we have lower highs across the board. Price is barely holding up above here, right? And guess what? We are now in the midst of rejecting this key SR level that goes across the board. Okay, see that price action right there, how it, this current four hour candle is unable to stay above this level? Well, your potential for position is like this, right? Oops, your stop could be somewhere up here. And your first target profit could be just around this low or just around this low. That would be your potential for short positions. Now again, in this market right now, if you don't know what to do and you're staying flat, you are doing better than 90% of people because the patience it takes to be able to sit in cash is by far better than any other kind of patience, okay? And not being in a position, remember, is still being in a position, meaning being in cash is actually a position because you're choosing, you're making an active decision, a conscious decision to not be in a long or short. Because every time the market moves up or down against your position, whatever position that you may have been in, you may have lost money. Yeah, you may have gained money, but guess what? At least sitting in cash, you're flat, right? A 0% PNL for a couple of days, a couple of weeks or a couple of months, is better than an uncertain PNL of what position the market's going to move in. Hope that makes sense. So overall, like I said, altcoins are heavily dependent on BTC, right? Doesn't matter what altcoin you pick, but now let's get into the long side, right? Because I do believe that overwhelmingly, the market looks like it's just about to roll over. I don't know how deep, I don't know when the bleeding will stop. I also don't know um, what's going to happen as today, the U.S. stock market opens in about, what is it? Uh, uh, I'm on central time. So about 10 minutes, right? So I don't know what happens then, right? Or actually 40 minutes, my bad. Um, I don't know what happens then, right? So the point is that at present moment, what you want to do is you want to be patient if you're in cash and seek out what could be the potential great buying opportunities for assets that you believe are going to be, I don't know, doing better or trading better six months, one year out? That is your minimum time frame and horizon you should be thinking in. In conditions like today, the best thing you can do is start mapping out a plan. I started mapping out a plan. And guess what? First thing on my list, Ethereum. Second thing on my list, Solana. Okay, so where exactly am I starting to pick you know, areas of key support that I want levels to be held? 
For Solana, I think it's pretty obvious. I want this level to be held. If I see Solana in some way, shape or form holding this level and unable to break it, this is probably the area that you may want to consider entering spot, not levered long, because remember levered long, you have a much, uh, you don't have as much leeway in terms of spot, right? If levered long start dumping and you're in a big position, you're gonna get washed out of the market really fast. But at least with spot, you can average in here and here and here, and you can keep dip buying until you know your heart is satisfied with the position, All right? Levered longs, you can't do that, okay? So this is the area that I'm watching for Solana, all right? I really, really want to be invested in L1 ecosystems like Ethereum, but also the alternative L1 ecosystems like Solana. Um, I wanted to say Polkadot, but I, I think I think going forward, honestly, I think Solana is going to eat Polkadot's lunch. Um, Cardano to me is not really, you know, even something I consider. Uh, Rune maybe, you know, I'm sure there's a couple of other L1 ecosystems out there that I should be paying attention to, but really Solana is the main one that I'm, you know, keeping my eye on. Okay. Um, let's take a look at other assets. So in the deck space, I'm paying attention to Sushi, most definitely. All right. And the Sushi front, I think, you know, this, this chart is pretty obvious to me. Now, I really think that at some point we're going to revisit like this low right here. Okay, we're not even that far away from it, but I really think we're going to hit that low. So that's around eight to nine dollars, right? Not really that far from where we are, but again, you want to see levels like that held. Why? Because I don't care about missing the absolute, you know, sniping opportunity to buy. You want the opportunity where price keeps selling into a level, okay, whether it's sushi and these other altcoins, but there is some strong buyers lined up. That's what you want to see. And those buyers will not let the price budge further. That might take one, two, three days for that level to completely be created and held. But that's what you have to do to be able to understand that there are some big players in the market holding up these assets. Because guess what the alternative is if they don't hold up and put in a bid to these assets? Uh, sushi will head to this low and Sushi will probably head lower. That's the alternative. And trust me, if you don't think that this current cycle can play out with 2018 and 19, you're gonna have a rude awakening in the next coming months if it does play out that way. And you're gonna kick yourself because you got greedy all this way, all this way right here. You didn't take any profit. And now the market is going to drag you underwater for who knows how long. Right, and who knows if your asset and your altcoin will be the one that goes back up, let's just say the end of the year or next year. Because guess what? Crypto is a landscape that changes very, very fast. Money flows move very fast. The space evolves rapidly. So you don't know if your prized altcoin has to move up with the market the next go around. Okay, that's one thing I definitely want you, want, want you guys to be careful about. All right. So right now you need to be in a capital protection mode. You don't need to take excess risk, right? You guys know very well, we've been talking about this stuff in, the, um, in our crypto community in the advantage side for a little while. Even yesterday, right? I just wrote a, a warning note for y'all because I know a lot of you were kind of seeing the market go down and I just wanted to give y'all some reassurance and just some advice and wisdom that I've learned over the years from people much smarter than myself, okay? In crypto, all right. The worst thing you can do is try to time the bottom and be able to think that your altcoin or whatever you know, crypto asset that you want to buy is going to be the one that will bottom and then it'll pop up and give you, you know, ultimate gains or whatever. So don't try to be a hero and catch knives. All right. Do not think that your altcoin will be immune to the uh, selling off of a bear market. I promise you more than likely it won't. Do not become a forced seller in this market. Um, by not having managed risk. What does that mean? For sellers is basically not having a game plan, being heavily positioned um, in levered longs or in spot positions, or you're, you just keep continuously adding down and now you're just out of ammo 
And guess what? The market keeps dragging your assets down and now you're in the negative. And then you've basically given up, I don't know, your 2020 or 2021 profits and gains. That is what I mean by don't become a forced seller in the market. Finally, right? Don't be the person from 2018, 2019, where you recognize that the market is going down. You recognize that you should be cutting risk, right? Yeah, you may be at a loss right now, but guess what? You may be at a further loss tomorrow, one week, one month from now, okay? See, where people get caught up the most and where they lose the most amount of money is they don't want to allow um, their losses, their small losses to be cut short. So the small losses become medium-sized losses. The medium-sized losses become very large losses because it's a very slippery slope in not understanding when a market is going down. And when a market starts to go down further and further, it doesn't give you a signal. It doesn't you know, write you an email or a letter saying, hey guys, I wanna keep heading down. No, it's basically you seeing the ability that you don't know right, where the market is going to be a week or a month from now. And it's okay to just start cutting risk. All right. All right, we got a question from the chat. Why are you so bullish on Sushi versus the other projects in the space? Uniswap, one engine room. Um, because Sushi has the bigger whales that actually trade there. It has a lot of liquidity that a lot of big players provide. And additionally, additionally, I know one very smart person who I've personally spoken to about um, Sushi, and that's Jeff Dorman. Okay, you guys could, should definitely follow him, right? This guy right here. Um, He's basically the, the chief investment officer of ARCA, which is you know, basically like a crypto fund. Um, they also help provide access and research and um, you know, buying and selling opportunities for bigger institutions. But he's talked about Sushi multiple times and why he believes it is the most underrated um, asset in the space. So I'm not as smart as him. And I already thought the Sushi was going to be good, but he kind of reaffirmed my judgment and guess what? It's not that, you know, we're just both talking out of our ass. The numbers back sushi. You can actually go to token terminal right here. All right. And you can look up the data behind sushi, uh, compare it to Uniswap, compare it to other assets, and see exactly where sushi is in terms of how much money it makes from fees, what kind of throughput it has, um, how well does it list projects, does it get hacked? Um, you know, th there's all kinds of metrics that you can track and Sushi leads, in my opinion, on all those metrics, uh, against Uni or, uh, Rune or even one inch. Okay. All right. What other questions do y'all have? Anything else I can cover? All right. The other tip that I wanted to mention to y'all is if you go to this Ethereum dominance page, um, the reason I brought that up is because I think Travis yesterday had mentioned something about uh, Ethereum dominance, right? I forgot where he mentioned it. See ETHD right here. Uh, and so I want to show you all this little nifty trick that I pay attention to. Okay, Ethereum dominance. And what you do is you look up altcoins versus Ethereum. Why? Because Ethereum is one of the strongest performing altcoins. And that means that if you have an altcoin that has consistently outperformed Ethereum, consistently. So for example, Solana, Matic, ETC is garbage, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Um, Doge is garbage, so I'm not gonna talk about it. XRP is garbage, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But some of these altcoins, right? Like if you have Theta Fuel is good, okay? So T Fuel is good. Oh, Theta is up here too somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. Theta is barely under the hair. Right, but overall, one year it's outperformed ETH. So why is that important? Well, if you are picking an altcoin, right, what you have to ask yourself is, do I buy Chainlink or do I buy Ethereum? Why is that important? Because if you're buying Chainlink and it is underperforming Ethereum, what the hell is the point of buying Chainlink? Yeah, maybe in the future at some point, maybe it'll outperform ETH. But if Ethereum is outperforming Chainlink, then what asset do you think that you should own? Probably Ethereum, right? 
So that is the kind of stuff that you have to pay attention to. These, these small little tips and tricks of how to invest properly is something that most people miss because what they might do is they might buy some crap coin, you know, um, way the heck in like the smaller market cap. And they'll say, oh, well, this coin has a potential to you know, go from 2 million or 10 million to a billion dollars. Well, it doesn't matter because potential doesn't mean anything. Potential is just potential, okay? Guess what projects are actually outperforming and you know, doing as good as ETH, if not better? Ethereum itself, Solana, Theta, right? Um, what are some other ones? Uh, we talked about Solana. I think FTT is one of them too, right? BNB is probably another one, right? These are the projects that you should be paying attention to, okay? That's what you want. Right now, the other tip and trick that I showed to you guys on the advantage side is I look at sectors. Right, sectors are really cool because you get to understand a breakdown of what are the different kinds of altcoins in the space that you should be paying attention to, and how do they differ from one against the other. So let's do sector summary, and let's do three months. In the last three months, what are the sectors that have performed really well? What's well, the smart contract platforms? What are the sectors that have performed the worst? It's the DEXs right here, right? So that's just the last three months because they got smacked down hard, okay? So what falls under the smart contract platforms? Let's look that up, okay? Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Solana, ICP, all of these have performed really, really well, right? These are the ones that you should be paying attention to, but that's the last three months. Well, what about the last one year? Oh, that changes the tune a little bit. DeFi and then CEXs, centralized exchanges, have performed much better than uh, the smart contract platforms. Okay, so this is how you are able to gauge and recognize that which parts of the market should you be focusing on. And once you get a deep dive into specific sectors, guess what? You just focus on the ones that are performing the best, right? Do your research, do your due diligence, and that's where you pull the trigger in terms of investing. Again, none of this is a, uh, investment advice. I'm just showing you guys how I go about trading and investing and why you need to look at the market from a profit maximalist standpoint, not an ETH maximalist, not you know DeFi maximalist or Bitcoin maximalist or any of that. How can you secure gains, make money in the market consistently? Okay, that's your goal, all right? If this time around, in 2021, you know, if you ask yourself, okay, well, if the market keeps heading down, what am I gonna do? What's my exit strategy? What is my take profit strategy? And you don't have one? Well, that means that you need to have a serious conversation with yourself about how you manage your trading and investing time. Okay. At least in the advantage side, I'm showing you guys everything that I can transparently, but I can only do so much. I'm not here to tell you to copy trade me because that's not what our community is about. I'm not going to tell you to what to buy or sell, but I can show you what I'm doing on a consistent basis. Yeah, I may not make the best decisions here and there, right? Because guess what? Three or four weeks ago, right? Maybe a little bit over a month ago, our portfolio was somewhere around 35, 40K in this 5K count, right? But we've had our ups and downs, right? Uh, I've been one point, you know, around February and March, around 10K. Then we went all the way to 20 and dropped down to 12. Then we went to 30, came down again to 15. Then we went all the way to 35 to 40K. Now we're currently around 18, okay? Point is, at least we can maintain that profitability. So you got to ask yourself, can you do the same for your portfolio, All right? I'm always here for you guys. I'm always here to answer questions. If you're having any trouble with anything else, you know, I'm always here to talk to you um, whenever you want to just discuss whatever's happening in the market, all right? That is the great thing about being part of our community. All right, folks, thank you all so much once again. Um, hope you all enjoy this content. If you have any other questions, all right, shoot them my way in the uh, Bitcoin chat, tag me, message me, all right? Take care. Um, the market is going to be pretty choppy the next couple of days, but we'll get through it. We'll get through it, all right? Cheers, everybody.